This video is sponsored by Squarespace. And what we're talking about today is actually some new lenses that Mikey, Micah, you know, I think it's actually pronounced Micah, but I've always said Mikey because we had this running joke called me likey the Mikeys. But I'm gonna just say Micah this time in the video. But anyways, Micah, the lens manufacturer, sent me some new lenses to try out with the red Komodo. Um, but these lenses work on a lot of different cameras, but we're gonna talk about those today. Got the full set here that they actually all have out right now. So these are super 35 millimeter Canon RF lenses. Just take these out real quick so you can get a look here. These are actually their mini cinema lenses versus the ones that I normally have, which are the full frame cinema lenses. And so what's fun about these is that they're, like it says, mini. So they're a lot smaller. They're T22, whereas the other full frame ones that I've been using and I've reviewed in the past are T21. And these are obviously not meant for full frame, so you're not gonna get that full frame look. Like, you know, I use mine on my speed booster or I use mine on full frame cameras. These are designed for someone that's a little in a different type of market, basically. If you've got like a C70 or Red Komodo, you don't wanna use a speed booster. You wanna have nice, small, affordable, really nice quality lenses for the, for the price, then these are the ones that you're looking for. So the RF, Mount is really nice because it just really slims down the whole package of the lens because you're using that mirrorless mount versus using the EF mount, which has the like, you know, the longer distance between the lens and the sensor. And so what we're gonna do here today is look at the quality of these lenses and see how they kind of sort of compare to the full frame lenses that I already use and just the, the overall general quality of them for the cost. What's really great about these lenses, these only cost a little bit over $2,000 for the entire set, which is really fun. And it even comes with a 10 millimeter lens, um, which is just, you know, you don't very often get something quite that wide and especially not for this inexpensive and at this quality. Just some quick specs on these. They have an 80 millimeter outer diameter and a 77 millimeter thread for your filters, which is a much more common size for matte boxes and filter sizes. So, you know, I have 77 millimeter like ND filters and my ProMist and stuff like that. And I've always had to adapt those to my other lenses. But with this one, it just screws right on, no problem. And then it has the 80 millimeter outer diameter, which works with a, a, pretty much every matte box on the planet. You can get a donut for 80 millimeters. So that's really handy about these lenses. Really nice build quality, you got that kind of nice metal design just like any of the other cinema lenses in the lineup you don't get the same kind of push on caps you actually have just the kind of more generic uh, squeeze caps here and of course your rf caps on the back and something else it's kind of like the other micas is that you have your focus markings on the operator side which kind of makes sense you know this price point you're probably looking at someone that is operating their own camera and not someone that has an ac all the time but you know they are cinema lenses so they do have the follow focus gears on them which means you could also have an ac pulling focus for you that's the only downside really on that front is it's just kind of like the other mic because the focus markings are not on the ac side which an ac would probably be pretty bummed out that they can't see the measurements on their side of the lens so i've tested these lenses out a couple different ways i did my usual kind of to set up a shot and threw each lens on to see how it performed. Looked at the bokeh, look at the chromatic aberration and stuff like that, the focus, the see just kind of how it operates and if there's a lot of focus breathing. So let's look at some of these tests and when we come back, I wanna talk about a couple more things that is really the main reason I was so intrigued by these lenses. So the first thing you'll notice here is that the bokeh looks pretty pleasing wide open. The bokeh is nice and circular, not distracting. And then right here, when I pull the focus here, you can tell that there's not a lot of focus breathing. There's not a lot of zooming happening. It's very controlled, which is something that's great to have on a cinema lens. If you're going to actually have a cinema lens, um, you don't really want it to breathe much. So if you're doing like large focus pulls, it shouldn't be distracting to the audience. Pretty neutral color, um, definitely compared to the Mica full frame lenses, which we will show at the end of this test. Here's the minimum focus, not very great for 35. I would expect this to be a lot closer. The full frames are a lot closer. Stopping down the bokeh here, you can see that it stays circular for pretty much the whole time on the 35. Um, on all these lenses, once you get to around, I don't know, T8, you start to see some edges in the bokeh, but for the most part, the bokeh stays circular, which is something that I really like about these lenses and all the Mica Cinema lenses. Once again, the 50 here, no focus breathing, very controlled, not a lot of zooming happening. If you look at like the side of my shoulder there, my shoulder basically just stays where it's at when the focus is racked. So far, they seem to be color matched, and I think they are all color matched across the board. 
unlike the full frame micas that tend to have a little bit of a shift once you go longer in the lenses. Not a ton of chromatic aberration showing up on any of these lenses. That 35, you could sort of see it in the background on the glass, a little bit of magenta coming through. That's usually more pronounced when you have another piece of glass in frame like a window or some crazy highlights. Um, once again here, minimum focus, not amazing, not terrible. 50s don't generally have great minimum focus anyways, but I am a little surprised by the 35. All the focus gears are working really well. You can see that here with the remote follow focus, put that on there and calibrated it, no problems. And everything works really well, just as expected for a cinema housing on a lens. Go to 65 here. Don't think the color is much different. It might be a hair bluer, but um, I'm pretty sure it's the same. Nice circular bokeh still. 65 is kind of fun. You don't see that a lot in cinema kits. You know, usually 50, then 85. 65 is kind of a fun in between if you're looking for something like that. The 65 is fairly long when it comes to Super 35 anyway, so a 65 might be more useful than an 85 anyways. Minim minimum focus, not great, not terrible. Um, totally seems fine to me for a 65. Here on the 85, I do feel like the chromatic aberration seems to be a little bit more controlled on the 85, probably to be expected with a little bit of a longer lens. The longer lenses tend to be just, generally the optics are usually better. Um, it's the wider you go when you start to see more issues. So here on that back window, not too bad. It maybe blooms a hair, but it's very bright out there. Seems fine to me, seems pretty controlled. I would say even the focus breathing here is very controlled even for the 85. So here's the 10 millimeter that's in the kit, something much wider than you normally see. So that's really fun that it just kind of comes with this kit. Uh, I don't think the distortion is that bad. You're always gonna have a little bit of distortion unless you get a zero distortion lens like the Laowa lenses when you go this wide. But if your subject is mostly in the center, looks good to me, matches the other lenses. My hand gets a little distorted on the edges, but for the most part, I. This seems pretty good for a 10 millimeter lens, honestly. And here we are with the full frame Mikeys versus the small, smaller Mica. Um, you can see a very huge color shift here. That full frame Mica is always gonna be a little bit more yellow green, less neutral for sure. But look at the minimum focus distance. It's way better than the Super 35 millimeters. And that bokeh gets really big because it can get so much closer. Um, yeah, you can just see that here. The, the minimum focus is just much better. But there's also a little bit more chromatic aberration on the full frame. And it's much softer, as you can see here, at a 200% crop um, between both lenses. They have different characteristics, and the full frame seems to be softer overall. So if you want something just a little bit more sharper, um, a little bit more maybe true toned, then the mini primes are gonna be the ones for you. But I also figured out if I wanted to match the full frame micas to the smaller ones or vice versa, it was pretty easy. Um, just a 500 degree cooler temperature shift on the full frame micas and then I don't think maybe like a minus nine green. So basically plus or plus nine magenta, it gets you 
almost exact to the mini micas. Let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. If you're anything like me, you're going to need to put your work online and Squarespace makes it super easy to build a website from scratch or you can use one of their pre-existing templates to get going. You can design whatever you want on the back end. You can embed videos and photos and move them around and customize it basically however you want. They even have an app that you can use to adjust your website or monitor your store if you have a store on there. So if you're looking to create a website right now, just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So for me, I already have a lot of lenses. I already have my Canon FDs, I already have the Mica full frame lenses. So why would I be curious and interested in these lenses? Well, a couple reasons. First off is the size. These are the mini cinema lenses, which, you know, mini sometimes can come in really handy. If you want a lighter rig, a smaller rig um, to bop around with, uh, the little mini lenses are a lot nicer to use. But the real reason is that I've been trying to use a gimbal a little bit more often. I know if you're a longtime follower of the channel, you know that I really dislike gimbals and what, how, what they do to a production and how you have to trust this robot to get your shot for you and I just never been a big fan of them. But uh, I recently have been doing this kind of long-term job where I'm kind of might have to use a gimbal on basically every shoot day and I've got a lot of shoot days ahead of me. So I've been looking into gimbals a little bit more often. Um, and so this is where this comes in really handy because as of right now when I throw my Komodo on a gimbal, if I'm not using a large gimbal like a Ronin 2, if I wanted to just use one of the, like a Ronin S or Ronin RS or the new RS3, I need something that's gonna be a little bit easier to balance. Now I can balance the speed booster, the full frame micas on the Komodo, but it's a big pain and it's really heavy and it doesn't really keep all of its movement when you do that. I mean, you can, you can get it there, but it's, it's a pain. So that's where these come into play because now I can throw these little lenses on my Komodo and I get a much smaller package for the gimbal use. Here, just let me show you real quick. So in the past, my rig was very large. It gets really mad at me because it's super front heavy with this. You have to add different weights on here to help balance it. But if I put these little mica lenses on there, it's going to get much easier. And then just like that, we have a nice small rig that we can actually balance correctly and use the gimbal how it was intended because this isn't really designed to max out the payload like that. So these are much lighter, much smaller. You can see them here. And they work much better on a little gimbal system like this. This is gonna be a lot easier for me to do a gimbal shot with this form factor over using those really long, big full frame lenses. Unless I wanted to switch to something like a Ronin 2, have the two handles, stuff like that. This makes things easier. I can actually do pull focus myself if I wanted to and walk around in a much easier fashion. So don't feel left out if you don't have an RF mount camera because there are a lot of cameras that these lenses can work on because they also come in Fuji X mount, Micro Four Thirds, and Sony E mount. And let's talk about that for a second. Like there's a lot of cameras on the market that are becoming full frame cameras. And I know that these are super 35 millimeter lenses, but they can still be effective in a lot of use cases. Um, let's just start with like something like the Fuji X-H2S, super high end camera that was just announced by Fuji. You know, 14-bit video, ProRes, you know, 14 stops of dynamic range, you know, that's gonna be a really nice camera for a lot of people. Well, you can put these lenses on that camera. Or say you wanna get a GH6, I mean like that nice high quality micro four thirds camera. You can get, use these lenses on that. And maybe even something like, you know, the Sony a7 IV. I know that's a full frame camera, but if you've watched my review over the Sony a7 IV, I talked about how good the super 35 millimeter crop mode 
on that camera is. It's actually, you know, you get no rolling shutter. You still get really nice 4K video. So you could put, you know, get the Sony E-mount versions of these and throw it on that camera, have a nice compact setup. And then let's not forget too, that Canon just announced a 4K 10-bit super 35 millimeter camera, the Canon R7, which of course the RF version of these lenses would work on that. And then let's not forget something nicer like the Canon R5C, which actually has a crop mode on that as well. So you could use these small RF lenses on that. So although a lot of cameras coming out right now are full frame, there's definitely still a case for Super 35 and these lenses only cost like $400 a piece if you don't want to get the whole set. So if you're looking for affordable, nice lenses that you can, you know, have a little compact setup, then these are definitely some to consider. So before we go, I want to talk about one last thing. When I was doing these little, that quick gimbal test with this setup with a 35 millimeter lens on the red Komodo and I was walking around, you can sort of see that when the sun really hit the lens, there was a little bit of a red cast in the shadows. It wasn't super noticeable at first, but after looking at the footage, I was like, what is that? So I haven't had time to test every lens shooting into the sun, you know, in a backlit scenario like that before releasing this video. But I just wanted to note that before signing off, there was some sort of weird red cast in the shadows and I'm pretty sure that has nothing to do with the Komodo because I've never seen that before. So yes, these lenses are, you know, great build quality, decent optics, but at the same time, you gotta realize that they are $400-ish lenses so there's going to be a little bit of quality differences compared to some of your nicer lenses on the market. Okay, well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That goes a long way. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya.